Losing Lee Anderson will be a blow, and it will definitely be a blow to morale inside the party. This would be very, very disruptive. This would be a very bad day, week, month at the office for Rishi Sunak's advisors. It's possible that it could be the, the, the most seats lost by a government ever. It's not a question of are they toast, it's a question of how well burnt the toast actually is. I mean, it's been quite interesting watching the trajectory of his um, reflections on what he said. Initially, there was some evidence of contrition. Now there's none. Uh, and he seems to be doubling down on his original comments, which I don't think anybody neutral in this could watch and consider to be an acceptable way for a mainstream politician to carry on. But now he's talking about going to Reform UK. That's going to be a very interesting development. Reform UK, as of course many of your viewers will know, is the latest incarnation of the sort of radical right, Farage, populist end of, of politics, UKIP through Brexit Party, through Reform UK. It's all kind of one, like Doctor Who, regenerating into several different forms. Um, and he would be a good fit with them. Uh, they uh, take very outspoken views on issues of immigration and diversity and identity and so on. Um, so I think they would be happy to have him. They also would, a defection from the governing party would be a big coup for them. It'd be the first time that's happened since um, uh, Douglas Carswell and Mark Reckless in the UKIP days. Uh, generate a whole heap of extra media attention for them and make an awful lot of people in the Conservatives anxious. And of course, Lee Anderson has defected before. He's not a lifelong Tory. He was a Labour councillor um, uh, less than a decade ago, I believe. Um, so um, he has form for changing his, uh, his team shirt. Um, maybe he'll do it again. If you get a high profile defector, somebody that a lot of Red Wall Tory MPs rightly or wrongly think of as in some sense an authentic voice of that kind of voter, it'll cause a lot of panic, a lot of anxiety, number one. Number two, given the state of the Conservatives in the polls, there are going to be a lot of MPs who are wondering about what they're going to do next, who don't really think their chances of survival are very high. That may increase the probability of further defections to follow, which will be a major headache for the party leadership. And then for reform, the thing about their current party leader, Richard Tice, is if you were to take 100 voters in the high street and ask and ask, show them a photo of Richard Tice, you might find one who knows who he is. He's anonymous. Nigel Farage is exactly the opposite. 99 out of 100 will be able to tell you who he is and what he's about. Lee Anderson's sort of in the middle. He's definitely higher profile than Richard Tice, not as high profile as Farage, but he would be a coup for a party whose current leadership is pretty much anonymous with the public. He would immediately become the second highest profile figure um, in on the Reform UK bandwagon, and that would be very valuable for them. In addition, I'm sure he'll have a story to tell about why he's defected and why the Conservatives aren't good enough and why other people should consider switching from the Conservatives to Reform, uh, which will be very valuable for them as a campaigning message. Can't see Braverman going, incidentally, because the chances of her being the next leader are too high. So we'll stick around and try for that. Um, but yeah, losing Lee Anderson will be a blow and it will definitely be a blow to morale inside the party um, because he's held in very high regard. You know, they're very, they're very pleased with themselves to win a defector like that over from Labour. It kind of reinforced their credentials as being the party who now spoke to these voters who Labour had neglected. So this guy goes back out the door again. Well, that, that sends the message that that appeal is now tarnished, that, that it's been lost, which of course is what we're seeing in the polling as well. But it'll it'll add kind of symbolic heft uh, to, to that and increase their concern that things are really not looking very, very good at all. And, you know, just more broadly, a, a defection is always painful for a party. Um, you know, it shows that people who really, you know, wanted to represent you in Parliament are now saying, I don't want to represent you anymore. I've had enough of you. And that's that's. That's never good for, for anybody's morale. So I, I do think it will hurt. I do think it will increase internal division within the party. And there is a chance that it brings further defections too. It's not a question of are they toast. It's a question of how well burnt the toast actually is. Um, so I, I, I just don't really see any way in which they can... Uh, the, the only way, let me put it this way, in which they could survive in the next election is if we get some major external disruption that completely shakes up the entire political picture. Now, of course, such things can happen. We've had two in this parliament. We had COVID and then we had the invasion of Ukraine. You can never entirely rule out 
uh, a sort of black swan type event, a political earthquake. But if the landscape remains like it like it is now, then the only question really is how big is the defeat? Um, whether they're actually going to carry on in government, it, it 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 just does not look like a remotely likely outcome. I think the biggest reason to stay with the Conservatives is there isn't really a plausible state of the world, I think, as yet, where reform are going to be a party that can get into government. Um, they are a protest party. They are, um, you know, gadflies. They are wasps stinging the right arm of the Conservatives. They're very influential. They're very effective. I mean, Nigel Farage, probably the most influential po uh, politician of the last 15 years. But if you are a rank and file MP who would like to be in government, who would like to influence things, your chances of that are still higher, even in a moribund Conservative Party than they are in, in the Reform Party. If Anderson moves, uh, then it's another period of turbulence uh, to come. It's going to disrupt a period where I think the Conservatives were hoping to get on the front foot with the budget coming and so on. Instead, it'll be more internal rows and so on and so forth. Um, but the end game for this, the end game for this remains a very interesting question. So right now, if you look at the current Conservative polling, uh, it's quite easy to envisage a situation where they fall to 150 seats, maybe 120 seats, maybe even a little bit lower than that. If you have a situation where, say, Lee Anderson defects and Nigel Farage becomes a big part of the campaign and reform put on another four or five points in the vote share, given the brutal nature of first past the post, you're not talking about 150 Conservative MPs anymore. You're talking about 50 Conservative MPs, 40 Conservative MPs. You're talking about the party of government becoming the party of Essex and Lincolnshire and nothing else. Um, so the end game to this could still be, if that trajectory is followed, one of the most extraordinary election results ever. There's a famous line that Tony King used in the 1997 election broadcast, uh, where he's described the result as being, uh, as the Conservative Party after that result as being like the dinosaurs after the meteorite hit. Um, well, this is that, but with an even bigger meteorite, potentially. Um, I mean, you'll be looking through the record books. It's possible if, if the current polling gets even worse, which is the resurgent reform scenario. It's possible that it could be the, the, the most seats lost by government ever, without exception, in this country. That That's a uh, an outcome that's certainly within the realms of possibility. Now, I'm not saying that's the likeliest outcome. Of course not. But that's the fear that's in the back of the minds of Conservative MPs, of people in number 10, when they're looking at reform. The fear is that's one piece of a puzzle. Um, that, that's one big piece of a nightmare scenario. Uh, the problem, incidentally, with that is if they if they try and overcorrect too much towards that group, then they make the nightmare scenario worse at the other end of the spectrum as well. It's, it's a really, really tough position they find themselves in right now because there are lots of different groups of voters who are unhappy with them for mutually contradictory reasons. Um, who, who'd be a political strategist, eh?